Praise God. Well, good morning, church. Happy Sunday to each and every one of you. I am so glad that we are here in the house of the Lord. God has given us a beautiful day. Praise God. It feels like fall. Very thankful for that. And I'm glad that we are together in the house of the Lord to worship uh, the Lord's holy name. Uh, several things that I wanted to get to this morning to let you know about, uh, but firstly, if you would, uh, take note of that attendance pad, please, and if you will mark that you are present here to worship the Lord, that is greatly, uh, uh, certainly a blessing if you will do that. Also, uh, church, as we are looking over our bulletin this morning, several things that I wanted to get to. Uh, firstly, uh, if you will take note of an email that went out uh, several days ago, it's in the midsection of your bulletin. It says, time to update. We just want correct information from you in terms of names and household members, cell phones, uh, addresses, that sort of thing. So you can go to our website and uh, update there or through that email, you can certainly get that link and uh, do that and update as well. So wanted to, uh, to let you know about that. Also, Trunk or Treat is coming up. Very excited about that. It is a wonderful outreach ministry that we do annually and we are moving forward with it uh, this year. Take note of the date there that we'd like to uh, host, Sunday, October 30th at 5 p.m. We actually have a sign-up that is on that table uh, near the exit door. I'm just going to ask if you would, if you feel led to sign up and to bring your vehicle and decorate it and bring candy, please do. Uh, it, it's going to be wonderful and just a, a very family-friendly uh, opportunity to, to have some great fun. Uh, also, church, on the back side of your bulletin, just a couple of things here. We have a wonderful opportunity to uh, serve our brothers and sisters. If you will take note at the top portion of your bulletin there, Saturday, October 22nd, right here in the Family Life Center at 8 a.m., we are going to be assembling cleaning kits. The last time we did this, it was a wonderful, wonderful thing, and we had an outpouring of the community come out. Uh, so we're going to actually assemble 700 of these cleaning kits, and we need your help. So uh, if you would, if you're interested, just uh, reach out and let us know. Uh, show up that day, and you will uh, certainly be uh, put to uh, to work there, but we're doing it for a great cause. Uh, a couple of other things here. If you'll notice about halfway down our Wow Wednesday, because we are moving into fall break this week, we're going to put that on hold for this coming up week and then pick it up the following Wednesday. We're going to be continuing in our study of the book of Psalms. That has been a wonderful biblical study uh, I, I, I have uh, gleaned a lot from it, and, and, and I just want to invite you uh, to come and to study God's Word, that great hymn and prayer book of the Bible, uh, the book of Psalms. Uh, and, and we, of course, will have a supper meal beforehand and then the study right after. But we'll pick it up uh, October 19th. Let me just mention a few other things that I wanted to keep you abreast with. And first of all, just a huge uh, thank you to you as the congregation. In terms of our disaffiliation church, uh, your generosity has been absolutely extraordinary, okay? And I want to thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. We have well exceeded the amount of money that it will take to disaffiliate from the United Methodist Church. So here's what I wanted to tell you now, okay? Be looking, okay, for an email for notice to go out about our church vote the week of October 24th. Okay, the week of October 24th, be ready to hear from me through email, from the pulpit, and also a written letter. Just be ready, 
okay? Be ready. Uh, I, I, have, I have been in conversation with the district superintendent the end of uh, this past week, and we have had a conversation uh, around that very thing, the church vote. So we need to get a couple of documents into him, and then he will set that date. So, so be ready the week of October 24th. And it will be in the evening, so we can all get off work and be done with our activities for that day to come and to have that vote. He is giving me 10 days okay, to broadcast when that church vote will be. So that official date will come out very soon. Okay, But please mark your calendars now, the week of October 24th. Uh, there will be there will be that church vote date set. Okay, so so please please hear uh, be ready to hear uh, from me regarding that. I'm going to ask Fuzzy Bradford if, if he will come forward. He is stepping in this morning for Andy Holly, our church council chair, and Fuzzy has uh, an announcement for us. Come on, sir. Well, I reckon since I'm stepping in for Andy. You and I are on for lunch. Right. <laughs> I've had the hots Love for her for years. Oh, geez. <laughs> All right, let's crank this up. <laughs> we have such a loving church that's just so full of outreach and mission. Uh, we have... Uh, I'm looking for a word and I didn't write it down. <laughs> yeah, we have a responsibility along with that to be an inviting church as people in our community say, oh, oh, you're from that church that's always got people out in the parking lot. As an inviting church, we get new folks come in to see how we're doing. Some that I see right in the back right here that I used to go to church with at another church. But folks that come to visit us, if they don't hear a decent sermon, they're not going to come back. So that brings me to the pastor appreciation point of view. He's our closer. He's the reason that, that we're growing. Think about that when you make your donations in the boxes over here on the right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you, Fuzzy. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. The pressure's on. You, you said a good sermon, Fuzzy, so wow. Pray for me, would you, church? Please. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need it. But thank you, church. Thank you for your outpouring uh, of love and, and support uh, always. Uh, let, let, me, uh, let me offer two other things. Church, if you will allow me five minutes after uh, my sermon, I, I would like to, to speak to you. Uh, thank you for, for giving me those five minutes. Uh, and, and lastly, uh, too, I, I, I want to, um, to say this in terms of our theme this morning, something that's very important, very relevant uh, for life, and that is expectations. We're going to go to the Word of God this morning and see what those expectations were from God that used the Apostle Paul at that church in Rome to speak to them about Christian expectation. So I'm looking forward to exploring the Word of God with you this morning uh, regarding that very thing that is so relevant to life and certainly to uh, faith and, and, and uh, in our community uh, together. And also, thank you ladies, also we have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful ministry happening today. The church, Cookie Stroll, how about this? You ready? I'm going to ask you and invite you, if you would, after our worship service, go through these exit doors right here, walk through the hallway. We have some wonderful cookies for you, for your friends, for your family. 
All of the proceeds will go to our disaffiliation fund. Thank you, ladies, for hosting this and for asking the entire church to partake. It's going to be extraordinary. I know it. So go and make a box, and, and thank you for, for that. So uh, let us now, church, as we begin our worship service this morning, let us center our hearts and minds to be in an attitude and spirit of worship this morning. Hannah will bless us with a gift of music. Please enjoy. What a blessing, what a gift. Thank you, Hannah. And church, if you will notice behind me, our choir is growing, praise God. And we have, yes, absolutely. We have Dan and we have Waylon and we have Mr. Ridge here. Wade, I'm sorry, Mr. Wade. Forgive me, sir. Forgive me. Mr. Wade and we have Mr. Ridge here, who, by the way, is our newest baptized member of Benton Methodist Church. Praise God. What a blessing. What a blessing indeed. Church, if you will allow me, let me offer a word of prayer for us this morning. And church, I'm going to go to the book of Proverbs now, the 23rd chapter, the 17th verse. Let not your heart envy sinners, but continue in the reverent and worshipful fear of the Lord all day long. For surely there is a latter end, a future and a reward, and your hope and expectation shall not be cut off. Hear, my son, and be wise, and direct your mind in the way of the Lord. O oh God, we must expect what we are praying or it will never show up. So come, Lord, and anoint our worship service 
to you be the glory always. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Church, I'm going to ask if you would to please stand for our opening hymn of praise. Thank you. a beautiful hymn, my, one of my personal favorites, church. Wow, wow, so very touched by that. Thank you, choir. Thank you, Hannah. Church, as we are standing, let us, you and I, do something very important, and it's something that Christians need to do now more than ever. You see, we can stay grounded and unified in what we are professing. So let us now profess what we believe, our affirmation of faith the Apostles' Creed. If you would, please join me. <clears throat> I believe in the Lord God Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Church, you may be seated. And as you do, I'm going to ask the ushers if they will please come forward for this morning's offering. And as they make their way forward, church, allow me to uh, offer a word of prayer this morning unto the Lord God Almighty. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we are indeed a thankful people. Thankful, O oh God, that you are working and moving in our lives, that you are working and moving, Lord, in our church. Lord, for you are working and moving so that we can go out, Lord, and share our faith, Lord, to stand upon your word, to make Jesus Christ the at the center of of all that we do, Lord, making disciples, building up the kingdom of God, and making and allowing people to come to Christ, to be healed, to be made whole, to have their lives transformed. Lord, we are working and doing that, Lord, with deep faith, and our commitment always is unto you. So bless this musical offering, bless this monetary offering, because it's to your glory we do this and all things. In Jesus' name, amen.
Church, you may be seated. And if you would, please join me in applauding Hannah and the choir once again. Amazing. Wow. Amazing job. Thank you, church. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What a blessing that was indeed. We are thankful. Thankful, thankful for music, for the godly way in which music can literally bless and anoint our soul. Thanks be to God for that. So church, let's do this. Let's, you and I, go to the Word of God in which each and every believer needs to be doing. You see, we always need to be standing upon the truth of God's Word. We always need to be protected by the Word of God. Let it, in a way, shield us and guide us and direct us along our path. So here's what I'm going to ask, if you would. Let us do this. Let us uh, go now to the book of Romans, which I am going to come back to in just a moment. Let us, you and I, uh, read the entire uh, 17th verse of the 12th chapter of Romans together. Normally, we make it responsive, but I I, I think it important uh, this day for us to read this verse together. So, if you would, and it is printed on the screen, please join me and let us say it together as the body of believers this day. Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of of all men. Amen, and amen, and amen. Church, allow me to offer a word of prayer for us this day. If you would, bow your head and let us go to the Almighty God. Father God, we come before you today, and we know that you love us, and that you have a plan for our future. This is a plan, Lord, of hope and goodness, because you are a good God. But Lord, we must wait. We must wait. And waiting on anything, quite frankly, Lord, can be a trial, Lord, but we must. As your scripture tells us to, we must wait on the things that are holy. We must often wait for the things that can give us life and faith. So, Lord, as we wait upon you, may we never envy the sinner. May we never be jealous of how you are blessing others around us, because we know ultimately, Lord, that our blessings are coming, that we, in fact, are the next ones to receive blessings. Not from this world, but the blessings, Lord, the spiritual blessings that give us life and life abundant. Lord, our time is coming. Lord, we will continue to walk in a worshipful fear of you on a daily basis, which simply means this, that we will give you our hearts, that we will give you, Lord, our very souls, Lord, that we must, absolutely must, stay in love with you. There's that reverence. There is that fear, O oh God. Even though, even though, O oh God, things may not look the way that we want them, in the natural world, we must believe. We must be steady with our faith. We must be steady in our walk with Jesus Christ because we ultimately believe that you have a beautiful future and reward for each and every one of us. And may our hope and expectation grow more and more each day as we look to your salvation and deliverance. So continue, Lord, to direct our minds, our hearts, and our souls into the things that ultimately please not the world, but you. May our feet ever walk in your path, and may we love you 
O God, as we wait in expectation on the fulfillment of all of your promises and prayers. And we ask this now in the name of Jesus Christ, who gave us such an exceptional prayer to live by each and every day. It's a prayer, O God, that can lift the brokenhearted. It's a prayer, O God, that lets us know that we are forgiven. It's a practical prayer, a prayer of faith. Let us now, church, as the body of Christ, offer this prayer unto the Lord. Please join me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen. So church, I am turning now to the book of Romans, that uh, great book of God's Word in the New Testament where uh, the Apostle Paul uh, is writing uh, to this body of believers, and he's really outlining his belief, his theology of God and the importance of God and Christ in a believer's attitude, in their walk, and in their relationship uh, with one another. So, uh, I, I have selected for us this day uh, from the 12th chapter in the book of Romans, verses 14 through 21. I want us to think today about expectations and how we might biblically think about the expectations that we put on ourselves and also the expectations from others upon us as well. So let us now go to the Word of God, beginning uh, this morning uh, with verse 14, and I'm going to read through verse 21. Hear now these words. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice, and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in doing so, you will heap coals of fire on his head. Do not overcome by, or do not be rather overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Church, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen and amen. So, uh, church, expectations. Expectations, that uh, is a big word. Uh, There is a lot there, that word expectations. I I, I was thinking uh, about that very word uh, a lot this week and praying about it and and certainly thinking about uh, the expectations that I set for myself, the expectations that others may have of me. And, And I would invite you this morning to do uh, that very thing. Do some praying, do some reflecting about that word expectation. The expectations, you know, if you think about it, the word expectations, that's a loaded word. 
is it not? It's a loaded word because there's positives and there's negatives to that word expectation, right? So the positives would be this, that if you are meeting the expectations that you set for yourself, okay, those goals that you have in mind for your life, and you are setting those goals and you are uh, actually making those goals or exceeding those goals, that's a wonderful thing. You can pat yourself on the back. You can tell yourself, and maybe even from others, hey, wonderful job, good job, you've done great. And if you're meeting the expectations that others have of you, maybe the boss, maybe the spouse, maybe your children, your grandchildren, and you are exceeding, in fact, those expectations, good job, great, that's wonderful, and you need to be applauded. So those are the positives of expectations. But you see, this word, expectation, there's also negatives, is there not? There's negatives to that word, expectation, particularly when you are not meeting your own expectations. You don't, in fact, exceed the expectations or, or goals that you set for yourself. As a matter of fact, when you're not meeting the expectations of others, whether it be a supervisor or a boss, okay, a spouse, a child, a loved one, how do you feel? You feel anxious. You feel, you feel downtrodden. Here's a big one. You feel oftentimes when you don't meet others' expectations, disappointed. Do you not? You feel disappointed. And when you have that kind of disappointment that you carry with you, it's a heavy feeling, is it not? It's a heavy feeling upon your shoulders, upon your mind, and upon your very spirit. So expectations, it's huge, and it's loaded. It's a loaded word. There's a great quote that I want to read to you about expectations, and there might be someone in our congregation today that this will speak to. Listen very carefully to what this definition of expectation says. Every word of condemnation you hear then becomes a challenge to overcome. Does that speak to you? Every act of dissatisfaction pushes you, in fact, a little more. Some of the greatest achievers are people, pay close attention here, who keep giving everything that they have in order to please others with hopes that people will finally give them the affirmation they crave. But here's the flip side to that, church. But this often results in inner exhaustion. And soon the voices that were crushing us become internalized, and we harshly evaluate with the same cruelty that we fought to overcome. Wow! Expectations. Expectations. It's huge. It's loaded. It's not simple. It's not clear-cut, much like life in so many ways. But here's the thing, the Apostle Paul, being the theologian, being the teacher that he was, we know his life and the transformation that he had in his own life. We can very much say through the writings that we have of Paul that he had expectations for himself. And many of those expectations that he had for his own being, he exceeded. 
but there were also expectations of others that were set on Paul. And when Paul had his transformation, where literally he had a name change from Saul to Paul, and instead of persecuting Christians, he began saving the souls of people so that they would know Jesus Christ, he felt convicted, you see, convicted to reach out into the Gentile world and set expectations upon others as he was reaching them with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And his expectations, and it really shows in this particular book uh, of Romans here, he was setting the expectations of Christian behavior for this church in Rome. And as you can imagine, Rome was not Christianized at that time. It did not know Christ. It was everything Rome was that was not Jesus Christ. There were multiple gods. There were lifestyles and activities that totally rebelled against the one God, Lord God Almighty. And here is Paul. He's going against the grain He's saying, look, there is one God, there is one Jesus, and we must follow him. And there are expectations, church, he says, that you must follow. It's more than just saying that you are a follower of Jesus Christ. You have to live it. Your faith has to connect to your doing. And that's what Paul in this segment in the book of Romans, this is what he's doing. He's setting forth these expectations. Here's the Christian behavior that I want you to abide by, that I want you to live by, that is meaningful for your life because everything else, you see, everything else will lead you astray it will ultimately lead you into not a closeness with God, but in rebellion to God. His expectations, Paul, were Christian behavior. So let me just kind of outline this for a moment. And here's what I found interesting. What, what gave Paul confidence, okay, what really warmed his heart what strengthened his spirit and his faith, okay, that he then shared, you see, with this very church and with the other churches that he was writing to. You ready for this? What he was writing to them was this, that in the midst of the brutal criticism that Paul often received, and also unrealistic expectations from his own church bodies that in a way were rebelling against him and also in the world that was rebelling against his theology, his writings. Get this, he didn't rely, church, on his own inner voice. You want to know why? Because our inner voice, just like our eyes and our ears, are fallen. And often that inner voice, it'll betray us, will it not? It'll tell us we're no good. The expectations that the world puts on you, the expectations that you put on yourself, they're faulty, they will fail you. There's no way that you can accomplish the task, the expectations and the goals that you put on yourself and that others have on you. That inner voice, you see, will often betray you. So where are we to look? Who and from whom are we to seek 
counsel from. Pay close attention to this. Paul did not rely on his inner voice, but on the truer voice of the Lord God Almighty. And that's what I invite each and every one of us to do. When we are setting expectations for ourselves, when we are setting expectations upon family, upon friends, upon colleagues, upon those who are under us, listen not to that inner voice, but always the truer voice of the Lord God Almighty. And let God's voice, you see, guide you, direct you, equip you for life ahead. Now, what I want to do just for a moment is offer for us how we can biblically do just that, how we can set those expectations for ourselves and for others. And this is important because we can use this in day-to-day life. It's practical, and I believe it's absolutely necessary. So I'm going to ask you two questions, okay? And I'm going to repeat this. In terms of setting realistic expectations for ourselves and for others, okay? Listening to the true voice of God. Number one, We need to begin to better discern and pray about what is ours to carry. And then number two, we need to pray and discern about what is God's to carry. That's listening, you see, to that truer voice of the Lord God Almighty. I'm going to repeat that. As we think biblically about setting expectations for ourselves and for others, my first question is this. We need to pray about and discern what is ours to carry. And then secondly, pray about and discern biblically what is God's. To carry. Now, I want to go to the Word of God and unpack this with us just for a moment, just, just to see how we can always biblically be thinking and praying through, okay, what is before us. So, let's begin now with verse 14. Listen to this. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Church, That is ours to carry. That is ours to be discerning. That is ours to be praying about. But listen to me, we cannot do that on our own. Because in our fallen nature, what we want to do if someone hurts us is to retaliate, you see? That is ours to carry. But listen to me very carefully, we need divine help in order to make sense of it, in order to surrender it to God. Listen to it again. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. That is ours to carry. But pray Jesus Christ into the situation where someone is blessing and cursing you. Don't pay it back in kind and do the same thing to them that they are doing to you. Pray Jesus into it first. Listen to this, verse 15. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. That is ours to carry, church. That is ours to carry because as the body of Christ, you and I are to be walking, you see, with one another. You and I are to be Jesus to one another, literally hand in hand as the body, weeping, rejoicing, 
and praising God together. That is ours to carry, church. Listen to this, verse 16. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. Church, that is ours to carry. But again, let's not rely on our own strength, our own know-how, our own intuition to do this. We need to pray Jesus into these details. We need to ask other believers, would you pray for me? Would you pray for me? Go to your trusted friends who are believers and say, walk with me through this. This is mine to carry, but I can't do it on my own. I need you, God. That's the true voice, church. And you need the believers as well. Let me continue here. Verse 17, repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Wow, church. That's ours to carry. That, you see, is an expectation. These are expectations, you see, that we can set for ourselves, goals that we can walk toward to achieve. But don't leave God out. Don't leave the Savior out of blessing these expectations that we carry and set for ourselves. Now listen to this. I'm going to verse 19. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head. That's God's to carry. Did you hear that? Vengeance is God's to carry. You see, church, man's vengeance, any kind of revenge that man does upon another man, listen, it'll always fall short. Vengeance is God's to carry. And we must give that to God, and we must know that, and we must trust that. Verse 21, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. That, church, is ours to carry with God's help. And pray the Lord, the King of kings, the Almighty Jehovah, into those very things because ultimately, church, the believer is going somewhere. The believer is never going backward. The believer is never stuck. The believer, if you think about it, is always headed toward the cross that will one day, this is very important, be replaced with a crown. So that is our reward. That is an eternal expectation that you and I need to be knowing and need to be remembering. So let us always, always, always be connecting our Christian behavior, our words to our actions. And lastly, let me say this, church. If there's someone in your life who has not lived up to your expectations. Let me challenge you to do something this morning. Don't hate them. Don't be angry with them. Don't even resent them or have bitterness towards them. What I want you to do 
It's another word. I want you to surrender them unto the Lord. I want you to have that expectation for yourself. That is yours to carry. I want you to surrender that person or those individuals unto the Lord God Almighty and replace that, you see, with the expectation of having then a stronger commitment to love and to serve the Lord. And with that, church, there is great reward. Thanks be to God. Amen and amen. So church, if you would, just give me please uh, just uh, a few moments of your time. Uh, I want you to hear this uh, from me, uh, your preacher. I, I think this uh, is important. So if you would, just bear with me just for a moment because it's important that your preacher uh, talks to you uh, uh, about this. Church, in recent days, there have been comments on social media about our daycare director, our church, and myself. These comments are not only reminders of the ugliness of social media, but also of how quickly opinions that are simply wrong are expressed because some do not wait for the actual facts to come to light to express those opinions. Fortunately, in this particular instance, the event at the center of social media was actually captured by the church's video cameras. This video has been reviewed by myself and key staff members from our church. And as part of the church's investigation, we also spoke to the director. In addition to our own investigation of the event, an investigator from the Louisiana Department of Children and Family Services interviewed those who were present during the incident and reviewed the video of the incident as well. In each of these instances, it was found that our director had behaved properly and the complaint was without merit. In making this report to the church this morning, I am aware that more than a month after the event, our director was issued a citation for simple battery by the sheriff's department. If our knowledge of the actual events were limited to the fact that a citation was issued, I and the church staff would have taken different action depending the outcome of the citation. However, I and the church cannot operate in a vacuum, and our actions should never be tailored to cater to falsehoods and baseless opinions expressed on social media. Instead, our actions should always be based upon actual facts, careful reflection, and prayer. For these reasons, because the director has been found by all of the above individuals and the state agency to have behaved properly, we have allowed her to continue working in her current position. We will, however, continue to monitor the situation and act accordingly. Now, I want to speak to you as your pastor now. As a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ Church, I want to tell you that I will always, always, always tell you the truth. And I will always be transparent with you in all matters. And I want to reassure everyone in our Family Life Center this morning that it is not only my goal, but also the goal of every worker at our daycare, our director of the daycare, and every staff member of this church to always look out after the best interest of the children at our church and 
our daycare. I am asking you now, church, if you would, please be in support and pray for and encourage Becky Diener. That is important. That is essential. Every person, church, has a right to due process. And I know in the bottom of my heart that Becky is a person of solid character and a person of great integrity. And Jesus and the children are of the utmost importance to her. If you have any questions, any questions at all, please reach out. I'm here to talk to you, okay, and to be transparent with you. So if you would, allow me to offer a word of prayer for us, please. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, oh God, we come to you. We seek, Lord, your divine, perfect will for our lives. Lord, we ultimately know that the closer we get to your perfect will, the devil will attack, and the devil will throw fiery arrows that will attack and try to harm the church and its ministries. But Lord, in this critical moment, let us know that your truth is there. And we stand upon your truth. Lord, we pray, Jesus, upon your truth. Let us seek the truth. Let us know the truth. And let us ultimately be uh, proclaimers of that truth. Lord, we cast the devil out and we pray, Jesus, into our church, into our daycare and in and over Becky and her family. Lord, in this moment, let us be prayerful for her. Let us be prayerful for our daycare. Lord, let us, in fact, unite through the power of the Holy Spirit and stand strong, Lord, in what we believe. Because ultimately, Lord, it's about you. And our goal always and will forever be about Jesus and the children. That is our goal. Lord, let us live out that promise, that expectation that the community and the world, oh God, expects from us. Let us keep that at the center. We ask this now in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Thank you, church. I appreciate you hearing me out. Here is our invitation this morning. We are going to sing in just a moment, and I'm going to invite you to come to the chancel rail. If you need time and prayer, this is the time, this is the moment to come and to kneel and to give it to God. Lord, I've had some expectations upon me that I cannot handle myself. Lord, I need your counsel. I need your help. Come, come come and share. Also, if you would like to join our church or profess your faith, we want to celebrate that moment with you. Now, come forward and let us sing together. If you would, please stand.
Church, let's give a big hand to the choir. Wonderful job. Appreciate you. And church, let me offer this word of prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, O oh God, what is ours to carry? Let us be praying about that. What is yours to carry? Let us begin focusing on that. Hearing, Lord, your true voice in it all. Guide us and direct us always in Jesus' name. Amen.